morning. I'm Pastor Greg Fetzer. I'm Pastor Teal Anderson. Welcome to this service of the Word for the fourth Sunday after the day of Pentecost. A couple of announcements before we begin. If you haven't already, I would invite you to download the worship bulletin. You can find that on our website, lcgselca.org. Encourage you to download that and participate with the service today. Other announcements, the council has approved a reopening plan tentatively scheduled for July 12th. Keep an eye out for the epistle. Please read that for more details for our reopening plan. We'll now hand it over to Angela for the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin, sin in thought, thought, word, and deed. deed. By, By your grace, grace forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. us. So that, that we, we may live, live and serve you in newness of life. life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be with you all. And also with you. with you and also with you let us pray O oh God by the, by the preaching, preaching of, of your Apostle Paul, Paul you have, have caused the light of the gospel to shine throughout the world grant that we may follow his example and be witnesses to the truth of your son Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them down to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? And the reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to a street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, Look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priests to blind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go for, he is an instrument who I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell off of his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus. The Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Freddie, how are you today? Well, Pastor Teal, good morning. Um, not too well. Uh-oh, what's the matter, Freddie? Well, I was playing with the ball inside, which I'm not supposed to do. Oh. And it bounced, and it broke my mother's favorite lamp. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Well, Freddie, what did she say when you told her about it? Well, she couldn't find me for a little bit. And then she found me, and she was pretty upset. And it was, it was a very hard thing to, to say I was sorry. I, I, I tried to be truthful and honest, and it was a hard thing. Freddie, that is hard. Yeah. But, you know, Jesus' power helps us do hard things. We can own up to things that, we, when we make a mistake, because we know that God loves us. We know that because of Jesus, we have forgiveness. Oh. The, so, yeah. just, like, just like when Ananias had to do something hard, he had to go and talk to Saul, which was a really scary thing to do. Oh. We can do yeah. scary, difficult things because we have Jesus' power at work inside us. Oh. So, a Ana Ananias, That's right. he was able to do something very hard because he knew that Jesus was with him. That's right. Uh -huh. And Jesus is with you when you do hard things like saying, I'm sorry. Yeah, especially when it's the right thing to do. That's yeah. right. Oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe knowing that, I can maybe sit down with my mom and, and, and really apologize. And, and maybe, maybe I have to be, you know, maybe there's a little punishment coming. But um, well, I have to do that. But, but with Jesus, I know I can do the right thing and ask my mom for forgiveness. And, and Jesus is with her, too. So I, I'm sure she'll forgive me, because I know my mom loves me, and, and God loves me, too. That's right, Freddie. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Teal. You're welcome. May the Holy One, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, shape us to hear the good news and share it with others. Amen. Today, we are beginning a five-week worship series in conjunction with the Vacation Bible School program that we are kicking off this weekend. Rocky Railway, Jesus Power, pulls us through. We will spend most of our time in this series in the book of Acts, Luke's account of life in the early church. Acts picks up the story of God's people where the Gospel of Luke leaves off at the scene of the resurrected Jesus ascending into heaven. Whether or not you are watching our Vacation Bible School videos and participating in the crafts, games, singing, and other activities, I invite you to engage with the book of Acts in one of two ways over the next four weeks. The first option is to read one chapter per day. There are 28 chapters in Acts, so that works out very neatly if you would like to read the story in order. However, in our Vacation Bible School program, we will be jumping from the middle to nearly the end and back to the, toward the beginning again. Then we stop over in the Gospel of Matthew before wrapping up with another passage from early in the book of Acts. If you would like to follow along with readings from Acts and Matthew that will provide context for each Sunday's readings, I invite you to follow along with the daily readings listed on page 12 in your bulletin. You can also find these daily readings on our Facebook page, where you will also find a question for reflecting on each day's reading. In our Vacation Bible School curriculum, today's Bible story is titled, Ananias Helps Saul. We learn in this story that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. What was it that was so hard for Ananias to do? God sent him to lay hands on Saul to restore his sight. Certainly, Jesus' power helped Ananias to accomplish this miraculous healing. But even for Ananias to approach Saul required Jesus' power, because Saul was a frightening figure for the earliest followers of Jesus. Saul had stood by, looking on with approval, while others 
killed Stephen, a deacon, by throwing stones at him. Saul participated in a severe persecution against the church in Jerusalem, going from house to house and dragging people off to prison. There he was on his way to Damascus with letters authorizing him to arrest any who belonged to the way, that is, any followers of Jesus, and to take them to prison in Jerusalem. In today's world, most of the severe persecution of Christians occurs in Asia, the Middle East, and North Africa. In the United States, where our free exercise of religion is guaranteed by the First Amendment to the Constitution, we are unlikely to experience a call from God of the sort Ananias experienced, to approach a known persecutor of Christians and bestow God's healing on that person. Yet, we have our own hard things that God calls us to do. Both when Jesus intervened in Saul's journey to Damascus and when Jesus called Ananias to go lay hands on Saul, change was at the heart of that challenge. Saul was being called to change how he treated others and also how he who he understood himself to be. He was called to a radical transformation from someone who hated followers of Jesus and chased them down to someone who followed Jesus and helped make new followers of Jesus by preaching the good news. Remember, the Greek name of Saul is Paul, and many of his letters are in our New Testament. Ananias was being called to change who he understood Saul to be, to accept that this former enemy had experienced a transformation and had become a sibling in Christ. Change often seems to be an aspect of the hard things God calls us to do. God has gifted some of us with personalities that are more open to change, and some of us with personalities that are more resistant to change. Thanks be to God for gifting our community both with those who seek a new way and those who treasure the familiar and the foundational. Even among those of us who enjoy and look forward to change, we may have found the changes flying at us faster than we might prefer over the past few months. We have had to adjust to a global pandemic, changing how we worship, learn, work, shop, vote, celebrate special occasions, and connect with loved ones. By contrast, even among those of us who prefer consistency to change, some changes can seem to take place too slowly. As the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America marks 50 years of Lutheran women being ordained in the United States, 40 years of women of color being ordained, and 10 years of LGBTQIA plus individuals being able to serve freely, we may be impatient with the slow pace of the church in acting to dismantle systemic racism and discrimination on the basis of gender and sexuality. Through baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have a gift that helps us cope with change, whether it seems to come at us too fast or not to happen quickly enough. We have the Holy Spirit at work in us, calling us daily to die to sin and be raised up to new life. Transforming us is God's work. Our hearts are broken as we recognize how sin is at work in our lives, and God puts our hearts back together, assuring us that we are loved and forgiven, bringing reconciliation with God and with neighbor through the power of the cross. Thanks be to God for equipping us for the changes to which God calls us. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Amen.
us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of compassion, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts eager to join in a festival shout of praise. We pray for bishops Elizabeth Eaton and William Gold. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. We pray for President Donald Trump, Governor Larry Hogan, and all who serve in government. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. Especially Trudy, Betsy, Bonnie, Joan, Darius, Don, Phyllis, Sylvia, Elsie Marie, Lowell, Harry, Jean, Betty, Juanita, Debbie, Lois, David, Bruce, Barbara, and Kimberly. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. As we share the peace, I once again want to give thanks to all those who generously support the work of this congregation's ministries. Remind you in this time of social distancing, there are several ways to continue to give. You can certainly send a check in through the mail. We have folks who are checking our mailbox on a regular occasion. Also, e-giving is an option. You can go to a link on our website, lcgselca.org, and there, follow that link. You can give that way. 
And finally, there, of course, is bill pay through your bank. Once again, thank you. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.